association with Huawei, uh, which you've written about in your book, uh, and which Australia has banned along with the United States from 5G technology. The Canadian government is saying, don't worry, uh, we're watching this stuff, there's nothing to worry about with Huawei. And Huawei has, has, has done what you have outlined how they, they operate. They've invested enormous amounts of money in Canadian universities. They provide research money for 5G technology. They keep the patents. They fund uh, Hockey Night in Canada, which is a major sport here in Canada. Um, their <laughs> corporate vice president is a former liberal MP. They just hired a conservative staffer. Um, I'd like to get your sense of why we should be concerned about Huawei and frankly, everybody else's opinion. Well, uh, it's uh, the, the, the exactly the same playbook has been um, followed in, uh, by Huawei in Australia. All of those things that you just mentioned, including the, uh, the sponsoring of sports teams, uh, Huawei uh, did in Australia. But um, we uh, in Australia in the last two years, uh, uh, partly as a result of intelligence uh, briefings to the government uh, from uh, our uh, uh, equivalent of CSIS, but also uh, because of uh, uh, information arriving from the United States about Huawei have taken a far more sceptical view of, of the company and understand its links into Chinese military intelligence. And, if you, and, and this was uh, exposed in, in most detail by the US congressional investigation of Huawei, extremely detailed... Uh, attempted examination of Huawei and its links to the government. And the bottom line of the uh, report which came out of the US Congress was that whenever it came to trying to explore the links between Huawei and the Chinese government, the company and its representatives were extremely evasive. Um, they uh, misdirected the attention, they wouldn't answer questions, and they out and out lied. And, you know, they had a lot to lie about, let's be frank. And on that basis... Uh, the US government became very suspicious about Huawei. The, the Bloomberg report that uh, uh, you, you referred to, Richard, is uh, just a warning of the extent to which this kind of espionage is just built into the system. And, um, and so I think that uh, it would be a grave error for the Canadian government to allow Huawei to supply its equipment into the, into the 5G network, because the 5G network is going to be the totally dominant system of communication across the world. Uh, it's going to be the basis of the Internet of Things. And if you have a Chinese company, a Huawei, with links to military intelligence, supplying equipment into that network, you are going to be spied on. And the other four members of the Five Eyes network are going to be very, very cautious about sharing intelligence with Canada. The cyber program for the PLA Army, it was uh, started in 1995. 1998, the CIA obtained a white paper written by two uh, colonels who became generals later. And one of the things that they mentioned uh, right from the get-go in that paper, and that paper is now available online because it has been released, for the next conflict, the next major conflict that will take place, uh, China will start with a major strike which will attack the computer system of all of its opponent to bring them to be mute, blind, and uh, uh, death at the same time, because we rely so much on computer. And they understood that way back in 1995, 1998. Imagine where they are now <coughs> compared to us. You're talking about uh, the mistake that the federal government would, would, uh, uh, would do too late. The federal government has already endorsed and supported uh, this. Uh, Bell Canada has signed a major contract under uh, Mr. Harper's uh, era uh, and is now imp imp putting into the system uh, Huawei equipment, contrary to the warning that uh, the Five Eyes have uh, given to us. And that will bring a serious debate uh, with our allies, the Five Eyes, you know, New Zealand, Australia, Britain, uh, and uh, um, the US, about if we want really to communicate and to share intelligence now with the, uh, with the Canadians, do we really want to keep them in our private circle? Uh, because we don't know if the communication will not be the sort of weakest link of, uh, of our system. 
And that's a, that's a major problem that will affect our exchange of intelligence, but it will affect also a, a, our relationship and economy with those guys. Um, yeah, I, I don't have too much to add except to say that <laughs> clearly what we're dealing with is a non-market economy. But that's not to say it will be forever immune to market impacts. The disclosures of piracy um, and the trade war with the Americans are having severe impacts on Chinese stock markets, uh, which is a start, right? Um, so to the extent that there is a loss of income, a loss of prestige, a loss of trade from um, espionage and other activities, uh, China probably won't get the message very quickly, but at least, at least, as I say, it's a start. And by simply green lighting Huawei equipment into Canada, uh, we're foregoing an opportunity to send that message. And um, as Michelle was so well put, uh, putting our communications grid at serious risk. <laughs>